Last weekend, a few good friends and I competed in a large game jam hosted by the YouTube channel Game Makers Toolkit. A game jam is a game development marathon where you are given a theme and a time limit to complete a project. This year, I'm joined by my friend Preston, who is doing the art, and my friend Jared, who will do the level design. That leaves me to pick up all the programming. Given my history of uh, questionable art, this is the best possible scenario for me. Even better, we already have some experience making games together, so I'm expecting to have a great time with this. Historically, the themes for this jam have been super broad, genre without mechanic, out of control, joined together. They allow for tons of creativity, and it's rare to find two games alike. Let's see, the theme this year is... Roll of the Dice. Roll of the Dice? Well dang, this is going to be a hard one. Initially, we struggled a lot with a theme that wasn't just a dice rolling puzzle game. We came up with ideas such as a dice character, something to do with Dungeons and Dragons, Romeo and Juliet with a dice and a marble. Ultimately, we settled on the idea of using the dice as a weapon in a platformer game. Our idea came from a drawing Preston made of a mouse with a dice. Our idea was to have the dice deal an amount of damage when thrown. I wanted to add an element of strategy so the player can time each throw in order to get a specific number if needed. With that, we started off in development. We started up by firing up Default and programming a sample prototype with a dice weapon that can be picked up and thrown. Holding the dice rotates values. I also added a little target for the dice to be thrown at. I was going a little fast and didn't really care about spelling as you can see. Next, I began adding some additional things for the dice to interact with, such as this door that can be broken down. You can see some furniture art reused from Drunk Thief Returns in the background. This was to sell the idea that this is the mouse's home and more than just a random blank hole in the wall. It also fits very well with the cartoonish art style we were going with. Now, at this point, the dice throwing mechanic on its own was interesting, but it felt more tacked on than anything, so we took some time and brainstormed again. We ended up adding a random effect that would either hinder or benefit the player. In the background, the game will pick a number between 1 and 20, and some effect will be given to the player. I used a pretty neat programming trick in Lua to make this super easy on myself. I also reused some art from Joining Forces to save a little bit of time. We decided to go with rules similar to Dungeons & Dragons, where a critical failure gives you the worst punishment and a natural 20 gives you the best reward. Our initial idea was that this was supposed to last throughout the entire game, but we worried about it growing repetitive, so we decided to save it for a gauntlet-style challenge leading up to the final boss. We decided to tie it in further by having the final boss be the one to roll the dice. Around this time, I also gave the player a health system based around three hearts. Everything was going really smoothly until we encountered a bug from our previous game where the character would just fall through the floor if the game lagged. I had a good idea of how to fix it, but I considered it low priority and just ignored it for the time being. While I was busy programming, Preston was working hard on the mouse animations. She experimented with a few different color palettes before settling on the gray color. She finished them around 5 a.m. on Saturday morning. We were already more than a quarter of the way through the jam at this point. I got the animations added into the game, and already the project was starting to look incredible. However, it didn't feel the best yet. It felt fairly stagnant to play, so I added in a platformer enemy to increase the challenge and break things up a bit. Currently, he can only spawn as an effect from the dice. He isn't too hard to kill, but he does have some amazing aim. We didn't realize it at the time, but his sharp aim would become a major pain point for players down the road. Once again, the dice was still feeling underutilized, so we created this sketchy NPC mouse. You can find him lurking in the walls. Talking to him unlocks a new area, but also requires a roll of the dice and some sort of extra challenge required for the area. Effects include shrinking the player, a damage buff, and a speed increase, among other things. To finish off each of these little areas, we added a switch mechanic to unlock more of the world. We added in colored doors and platforms that were once again borrowed from joining forces. I don't know about you, but I'm starting to see a little bit of a pattern here. Anyways, I added a quality of life feature where instead of having to pick up a dice each time, it would just respawn on the player. This prevented the dice from falling all the way down the map and requiring the player to essentially traverse the entire game just to pick it back up again. I added a nice pulse animation to the dice to indicate when the value changes. The placeholder enemy was also replaced with this blob enemy. It took a little bit of trial and error to get him functioning right. Wait, wh wh why does he have a gun? Oh no! Next, I added in a final switch to start the gauntlet final sequence of the game, where a random effect triggers every five seconds. I also had the falling through the map problem return worse than ever. I was able to increase the collision size on the character and drop the frame rate a little bit and that seemed to fix the problem. 
Preston finished the tile map for the inside wall, and the level was beginning to look gorgeous at this point. I took some time and added mouse holes to the tile map. These holes let the mouse traverse through specified walls. We ran into a minor issue where some walls needed collision to keep the player from running through them, but others couldn't have collision because of the aforementioned mouse hole. Our solution was to create a tile called Wall that had collision, while none of the walls actually did. We hid this tile under everything else and simply painted over it with the real art. This gave us huge control over everything and helped us to simplify the level design. Back on the programming side, I added a simple tutorial menu, followed by an intro and outro comic book cutscene. I then started working on the final boss. Usually when I do a final boss, it is just a normal enemy with a huge amount of health, but we decided to do a proper final boss this time around. The final boss is this giant cat. Preston drew him on several layers, so rather than having 50 full-sized cat images with minor changes between them all, we decided to just have a few images and rotate them in and out. We ended up making him orange, which gives the effect of a reverse Tom and Jerry situation going on. Me. Mom, can we have Tom and Jerry? Mom. No, sweetie. We have Tom and Jerry at home. Tom and Jerry at home. Whatever this is. The boss can either stand or lay down and has different attack animations depending upon which state he's in. We also decided to incorporate the dice directly into the final boss fight to sell the theme one last time. At this point, we had barely slept for two days and only had two hours left, so we scrambled and eventually got everything we needed into the game. We kept working on bug fixes until the very end. We got up a web build, we attempted a windows build, but it took too long and was not meant to be, unfortunately. I am very happy with the final product. Overall, the game looks beautiful. It's a very short game to play. I can finish it within about five minutes or so, but it's not really about the time it takes to finish, it's about the experience. And I think the experience here is really good. With the jam finally over, I took some time and put together the itch page and also created this nice thumbnail based off one of the comics. Wait, what's that in the corner? Well, back in 2021, I gave myself a challenge. 12 games, 12 months, one story. I was able to cobble together a little universe of interconnected games. When I finished the challenge, it felt incomplete and like something was still missing. As a result, I decided to continue the narrative through more projects. This game is officially canon to that story, and we decided to add a little secret into the final cutscene to explain the connection. In terms of future plans for the game, fixing the music is a very high priority. All of the music is currently recycled from other projects. We also want to fix the enemy. He can very much just snipe the player, and it feels unfair in some cases. We also want to enhance the level design and make each area feel unique in some sort of way. Let me know in the comment section below if you have feedback on the game or this video. Please like and subscribe if you enjoyed it. Thank you for watching, and God bless.